Hey everyone, now before we get into this video, I wanted to let you know that I've set up a club on quarterback or club.gg called Exiles Exiles, and this is a completely legitimate and easy way to earn free skins while playing League. It's also a way to support me, so if you like the content and you think my content is good enough, I'd really appreciate you joining. Club is rewarding everyone for their dedication to the product with some extra coins, so for this weekend coming up August 2nd, every challenge will have double rewards. All you have to do is below this video there will be a link, so just click it and press join the club to register, and then play for the club to download the app from the website. Then all you do is select a challenge before each game of League that you play. If you're going to be playing League anyway, especially just some normals with your friends, you might as well join my club and earn some free skins. So a lot of people, when they uh, they talk, okay, they always say, like, LOL tank meta. Yeah, we started that game 0-2, and then we started building tank items, as we were supposed to, and whoa, tank itemization, so balanced. Build it on any champion, they suddenly become better. Tank LeBlanc, whoa! Better LeBlanc. Tank Talon? Whoa! Better than Assassin Talon. I think we're seeing a trend here, guys. I think we div I think this is trying to prove a point that tank animization is too strong. The tank meta in Season 6 is arguably the most unfun time in League of Legends history. At that time, carry champions, specifically AD fighters and assassins such as Riven, Yasuo, and Zed, were essentially troll picks. There was nothing you could do versus tanks, as they stacked far too much armor, were too good in lane, and genuinely outdamaged you. Tanks have been ridiculously strong and more importantly safe picks in League of Legends for a really long time which has created this spooky tank meta consisting of invincible champions that are, well, well, invincible, but somehow not only take zero damage, but are also simultaneously the champions that deal the most damage in teamfights and the most damage on the enemy team. At one point, this item build was extremely broken. It honestly felt like it did the same damage as this item build. It was pretty abysmal to play in and play against, and those players just chose to start building Iceborne Gauntlet and Sunfire Cape on every champion in the game. There was no doubt in anyone's mind, this is how League of Legends shouldn't be played. This was horrible. However, this wasn't the first tank meta during League of Legends history, and it wasn't the first tank meta we had ever seen. In fact, it may have not even been the worst, because during Season 3, there was one item that was given a new passive, Warmog's Armor. This turned out to be one of the most broken items ever, and it made everyone a tank. You could stack 1, 2, 3, heck, even 5 Warmogs and boots, and be a tank. Every champion could be in the League of Warmogs. It was given this passive as a result of the removal of another item, and that item is exactly what we're going to talk about today. Because of the removal of this item, it would spawn many crazy things that we know and love to hate today about League of Legends history. This is the history of Force of Nature. Force of Nature was a very unique item. It was released during the beta stages of League of Legends and was in the game for about three years in total. On the June 12th patch, way back in 2009, along with the release of Karthus, Force of Nature was added to League of Legends. It still to this day is the only item in history to ever give this unique combination of stats. It gave magic resistance, 76 MR to be in fact, which was quite a lot, it gave health regeneration, and movement speed. In the last couple of episodes of Iconic Items in this series, we were talking about items like Ardent Sensor and Banner of Command, which were pretty much complete troll items when they were first released. They were changed, buffed, nerfed, reworked, turned upside down and inside out about 15 times until they were finally OP. Force of Nature, however, is a completely different story. On its release, it was immediately too strong. This combination of stats just makes perfect sense on certain champions that were pretty good at the time. 
Remember, this isn't season 9. There's no Kiana, the Mordekaiser rework. There's not these crazy, massively overtuned, overloaded champions. Champions back then were quite simple. Looking at the stats alone, what kind of champions do you think about and think of? Movement speed, health regeneration, and a metric crapload of magic resist. Think about how good these three stinkers were with this item. Bruisers and Juggernauts such as Garen and Mordekaiser could definitely build this item and weren't that bad with it, as any item with that much MR alone would be good as a 1 or 2 off tank item choice. But man, on tanks, this was OP. Combo this item with the Thornmail and a Spirit Visage on Dr. Mundo, and you're king for the day. What made this item so loved by the players and champions that used it a lot had to do with the fact that it was so unique. I think this was the strongest but also most OP movement speed tank item in history. Some movement speed tank items are definitely good, and we still have them in the game. Items like Righteous Glory's active, Dead Man's Plate, and Raptor Cloak's passive are all quite good for tanks, but it's not the same. 8% movement speed all the time rather than situational movement speed either being on an active or having to build up or being near turrets is just infinitely better. The item was also quite good on junglers, something like Aramis. You're a tank so you value the magic resistance, but you also gank a lot so you value the movement speed that way you can gank easier and more efficiently. One of its core problems is that the item gave a crapload of magic resist and health regen, even without the movement speed. This would be changed and reduced, trying to nerf the item a little bit after its release. Again, the item was still too strong, receiving another nerf in the following weeks, this time hitting more of the regen and the movement speed. Riot knew it was still going to be a problem. These were fixes that were mostly seen as band-aid fixes, rather than full readjustments. Whenever Riot looks at items, a lot of the time they have to look at what parts of the item synergize with each other, what makes them good together. For example, let's look at a very simple item, which is Lost Chapter. Lost Chapter gives a lot. It gives mana, cooldown reduction, AP, and it's passive. All of these serve one major purpose, better spells for AP champions. More mana means you can use more spells. More CDR means you can use spells more often. More AP means your spells are stronger. When looking at Force of Nature, it was definitely good on a few champions, and had a couple of synergies like we mentioned in the beginning with things like Dr. Mundo and Singed. But honestly, on most champions that did build tanky, it didn't really make that much sense. The item was removed because the stats it gave didn't synergize with each other that well, and it provided too much magic resistance in one item. The reason tanks did build it, even if they shouldn't, was because of the massive amount of magic resistance, 76 MR. So, if Riot had to nerf the MR that it gave, then really only 2-3 champions would ever want to build it. Rather than when it has so much magic resistance, not only is it good on those 2-3 champions, but also all tanks, it just becomes the best tank item for mages. So, it was in line to be removed, and that would happen once we hit Season 3. The passive on the item was given to Warmog's Armor. And to compensate for a massive magic resistance item being removed from the game, Spirit Visage was given more magic resist to serve as a different endgame MR item. On paper, this seems fine. However, the implications on what this would do to League of Legends would be remembered forever. Just as one more quick reminder, make sure you click that link below to join my club at club.gg to join Exil's Exiles and earn some free skins while playing League. Season 3 was a wild time for OP items. We all know and remember just how broken Black Cleaver was. It stole the show as the best item in the game with the new patch. Preseason 3 could really only be defined by the scientifically and politically correct term, a clown show. While Cleaver definitely was the most OP item coming into that season with the new patch, it wasn't alone in that regard. Because of the hype of League of Black Cleavers, no one caught on right away to just how OP Warmogs was. It didn't take long after the dust had settled on Black Cleaver to move right into the League of Warmogs. This baby turned anyone, literally anyone into a tank, and it spawned the first major tank meta in League of Legends history. Plenty of tank items were good before this, just as Force of Nature was, but nothing up until that point compared to this man. It gave a ridiculous amount of stats for the cost, and is one of the most cost-efficient items of all time. You stacked three of them if you didn't even care about how OP the health regen was, simply because that's 3k health for you anyway. 3000 health for 8000 gold. 
that's pretty busted. You could build it on tanks, supports, bruisers, who cares? Just build warmogs. The item was nerfed several times in a row after the League of Warmogs, increasing the cost and lowering the regen. It would never be as it once was, but nowadays sits as an okay item in the current meta, with the only problem being that the item is a late game oriented item as a good 5th or 6th option for tanks. The problem is, games really never go that long anymore, which is why tanks usually aren't seen with it much right now. However, with a quick meta shift to longer games, you're going to start seeing this item more and more. With the launch of Nexus Blitz, which was an experimental game mode for Riot, we got a lot of fun items put back into the game. A ton of old classics are in the shop for the game mode, and Force of Nature is no exception. It gives 90 magic resistance on Nexus Blitz, and many players have had some fun with some full regen builds, with Warmogs, Force of Nature, Spirit Visage, and the Resolve Tree. It's pretty awesome to watch Mundo stand in a 1v5 and heal all of the damage that people deal. You can tank turrets pretty much infinitely. Interestingly, for Riot's new game, Teamfight Tactics, for whatever reason, Force of Nature is the best item in the game. Riot could have picked many OP items to act as the icon for best item in the game, such as DFG, Black Cleaver, Banner of Command, but Riot chose to put Force of Nature there. It builds out of two spatulas, and when combined, it allows you to place an extra unit. It's a pretty rare item, and the individual spatulas by themselves are also quite rare, so you gotta get pretty lucky to get multiple of these per game. But when you do actually get them and you have 10 plus units, it's pretty crazy how good your team comp can be and how many synergies you can create. Fortunately, but also unfortunately, the chances of Force of Nature being added back into League of Legends these days is basically zero, mostly because it's already been put onto two items, as we said. Warmogs and Spirit Visage are basically just Force of Nature split up into two items, similar to how an old item like Zanya's Ring also had to be split up into two items, Deathcap and Hourglass. One big thing that's missing at the moment is a tank item that gives percentage movement speed, which I do think would be very interesting to see back in the game. Can you imagine a Maokai running at you with Raptor Cloak, Dead Man's Plate, Righteous Glory, and another movement speed tank item? Wait, um, actually that sounds really unfair. Uh, on second thought, scrap that idea entirely. I, actually, I really hate tanks. Uh, can we please buff Black Cleaver and Conqueror and Last Whisper and Riven because all of those things are pretty weak in the current meta right now. Let's just make tanks a little bit worse because they're too OP at the moment, right? Yeah, whew, okay. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more content. And I will see you guys all next time.